All right, let's get back in this thing today. We're going to be talking about Andrew Tate. Once you guys know, I have a serious problem with Andrew Tate. Um, his extortion, his deception, his trafficking, his, um, yeah, toxic masculinity, extreme, and all the things that are related to Andrew Tate. But he is a person who commands an audience when he speaks about things because he's able to just put comments in a certain perspective. And I don't like his comments. And I don't like this comment that I'm about to listen to him say. But I can't really deny that what it is that he's saying is, has some measure of truth to it. And so this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Maybe it's going to hurt you more. But anyway, it's our top story for today. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about Christianity and Islam being the last true religion. Now, I just contrasted Christianity and Islam. But he's saying, hey, look, if we're going to decide which one of these is a true religion, Islam is the one that gets the crown. Oh, man, I hate it. Let's get to our top story. Would you like to learn to play? Sorry about that. Let's get Andrew Taylor. It's wrong and right. Mm. It's a simple religion. It's, well, it's wrong and right. I mean, you look at other religions. Let me just start. Let me let me get a fresh start on that one. Islam is how simple it is because there's wrong. The best thing about Islam is how simple it is. Now, this is not any type of critical thinking here where we take uh, Occam's razor and say that the, um, the premise or the conclusion of a philosophy is based upon the simplicity of that philosophy. As he's using a type of Occam's razor argument. That any type of phys- philosophical premise, if there's all of this complexity to the system, then that system invariably folds in on itself. And so the way that we prove axioms or truths is by how simple they are. So he's using that type of terminology and, and argumentation, I should say, to describe Islam as being a very simple religion because it makes claims and it stands by those claims. And it doesn't add to and add to and add to and add to. Now, I would say that this is oversimplification of the claims that Islam makes, not that Andrew Tate is any type of intellect in which we should be (laughs) concerned. Oh, he's intellectually overwhelming us now. He's not making a claim that is intellectually um, high and lofty. What he's just simply saying is that what he's simply saying is what it is that he's about to say is that Islam makes claims that they actually are willing to stand by. All right. Mm. It's a nice. simple religion. It's, well, it's wrong and right. I mean, you look at other religions and it's... Simple religion is wrong and it's right. There's no gray. Now, I'm going to let him make his argument. I'm going to give him enough rope so that he can hang himself. It's also subjective now. Yeah. And that's why I've said many times on different podcasts that it's the last true religion. If you don't have a strong barrier, if you don't have a yes and a no, you don't have a religion. If you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. And if you believe in God and you say, I believe in God, but I'm not a Muslim, I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. You're a Christian. He's saying a lot of stuff here. (laughs) He's saying a lot of stuff here that I think we need to listen to and we need to back up and think about. That's what this show is about. Think about this, that he is saying, and Andrew Tate speaks, many, many people sadly and regrettably listen. He's saying, if you have a religion and you say that you believe in God, then if you're talking about all the gods that are out there, are my Hindu friends listening to this today? Because i got a lot of friends that are Hindu friends. If my Hindu friends are listening to this today, there's not 350 million gods. If you're saying you have 350 million gods, listen, you don't have a God. 350 million anything, and you don't have that one thing, then what is the purpose of all the 350 million? Because there's this God, and this God, and this God, and this God, and you guys know that we went living in India for a while. You guys know that I've been there numerous times. You guys know that I love India with a passion and I have a heart for India. But all the multiplicity of gods and all the different ways and all the different versions, I can vividly remember walking down the streets and seeing all the visible ways that people were trying to appease God or connect with God or find God or become God. And all of these different nonsensical things meant that there were people who didn't know God at all. So Andrew Tate boils it down to this simply, and he says this, and I think this is a good route for us to at least travel upon. If you say you believe in God, okay, that's fine. Then you're probably a Muslim or you're a Christian. Uh, What else we got here? (laughs) 
He probably throws the Jews in there at some point um, in terms of monotheistic religions. And yes, Judaism is monotheistic. Christianity, monotheistic. Islam, monotheistic. He's going to err that he, being Andrew Tate, is going to err on the, the Trinity. But he's saying this is very simple. You're a Christian, you're a Muslim. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Listen to what it, I'm going to back it up for just a second. And I got to get to those warrior highlights a little bit later. But anyway. You're a Christian. What is Christianity anymore? What does it mean? You, you can go to a Christian country and America, let's say, for example, and you'll get in more trouble for insulting George Floyd than you will for insulting Jesus Christ. Mm, dang. That's one of those things where I'm ready. <laughs> you, do, you guys know I'm trained to and poised. I'm like Thundercats back in the day. Thundercats, Thundercats. Oh, like I'm ready to strike. I'm ready to pounce on the head of Andrew Tate. And then he went that direction. Doggone it. Why did he have to go there? Why did he have to call out? I'm ready to go back to playing video games. I'm, I'm, I'm out of this one. No. Why did he have to go to talking about Christianity in America where I live? He brought it home and he said, hey, if you go to Christianity in America, I mean, you'll get in more trouble for insulting George Floyd than you will Jesus Christ. Because after all, don't nobody really care about Jesus in America. Now, that is overhyped, of course. That is sensational to the point where he gets people like me talking about it. But does he have a point? Does he have a point that there are certain segments of Christianity in America that have become so woke that the impetus and the catalyst for activity, social activity, movement is more centered on something that happens to George Floyd, injustice that's taking place in the black and brown communities than it is suffering and experienced because of persecution and Jesus Christ? Oh, dang. Um, yeah. So there are a lot of people that responded. <laughs> A lot of people burning down things. There are a lot of people that had a lot of intensity in their voices, uh, and as it relates to George Floyd, and if you know somebody say you know something about George Floyd, and they, they would get into a heated, passionate discussion about the rights and the wrongs and the merits there. And I'm not here to do all of that today, but I'm here to simply say, where is that heated, passionate discussion when it comes to people saying the wrong thing about Jesus Christ? <laughs> That's all I'm simply trying to say on this show. Where is the intensity and the passion that people should have when somebody comes out and says Jesus was not the son of God? There ought to be some intensity related to that discussion. Hell to the no. You just made a wrong statement in what it was that you just said. You cannot say that because that is absolutely wrong on its face. It's wrong in reference to what has been revealed to us from scripture. And if you have any other way of coming and addressing God or knowing anything about God other than this book, then you are wrong. Our problem is not that we fight too much, but our problem is that we don't fight the right battles enough. Who's gonna stand up for Jesus? Who's gonna talk about these things? And I don't, I don't, I don't care how popular my show gets, but who is going to stand up and talk about these things in a way that causes people to think, why are we not more passionate about the doctrinal claims of who Jesus is? People are saying all sorts of false things about Jesus. And we're like, huh, you know, those are my fingernails. Those are my crickets. And I guess maybe I'm talking to you too, pastors. Is Andrew Tate working you? Is Andrew Tate owning you in this conversation that he's having? Is Andrew Tate on your head like slam dunking? We got to do the head top on this one. Damn, he, he, Andrew Tate put one on your head. He yammed it on you. If you're a pastor out there and you're not sticking up for the claims of Jesus, then what the heck are you doing in your pastorate? Please resign from ministry. I would rather there be more, less churches that are out there than more churches that are out there with pastors who don't stand up for the claims of Jesus. Maybe I'm even talking to you, Christian, who's at your workplace today. And there's people who are going to say false things and you're just going <laughs> to, I'm going to be one of the boys. <laughs> I'm just going to get along with everybody. <laughs> I'm just going to tolerate everything. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm Christianity. <laughs> 
What kind of nonsense is that? What kind of nonsense is that? I guess I'm talking to you too, Christian. If you're going to be weak-willed and tolerate everything, then I guess Andrew Tate dunked on your head as well. Yeah, for sure. You literally, you can walk down the, t- the, the walk down the street with a T-shirt saying Jesus is gay. Girls barely go to church. If they do, dang it. I hate this guy. <laughs> Not hate like I'd want ill to happen to him, but I hate the fact that he's saying something that I can't argue against. I want to be able to argue against Andy. I want to be able to look Andrew Tate in the face and be like, you are talking nonsense. But Andrew Tate is actually talking such sense in this regard that I have to just almost put my head down in shame. I live in East Nashville, folks. People wear all sorts of stuff. People have all sorts of bumper stickers. People have all sorts of overt liberalism, pride flags, and nonsense that is flying all around. I wonder if anybody's going to do anything about that. Nah, it's just Jesus. Nah, we can we can insult him. We can disrespect him. Y'all won't do that to Islam. Ain't nobody, hey, 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 ain't nobody around here. <laughs> and ain't nobody in America flying flags, posting things, saying things about Allah. Because you know they'll they'll pull your cord in a second. And so I just hate that Andrew Tate is right. He's wrong on some things. But he's right on this. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Doggone it. Ouch. Who knows what they were doing the night before? Mm. And he's just talking about the Christian girls. Or girls that go to church. I don't even know what to say. I, I, I'm going to have some guests on next month. They're going to talk about this OnlyFans movement. And if you don't know what OnlyFans is, then you just stay not knowing what that is. But those of you, many of you who are watching this today know exactly what I'm talking about. Christian girls, and I would say Christian guys, but you guys know where I'm going with this Christian girls thing. All right, thank you, Andrew Tate. None of it means anything. And then if you go and find a Christian that says this trans person has, has changed gender, what do you think about that? Christians are so soft, they're going to go, well, I hope he finds redeem, and I hope they, you know, he finds guidance. Haram, bro. Oh, my goodness. I got it. I'm about to unplug. I'm about to walk off my own show after watching this interview. And I've watched it several times. Look, I prep for the show. But I, I feel like walking off my own show. Because I know that what he's saying is right. I know that what he's observing is this phenomenon in Christianity that just absolutely blows my mind in 2024. Um, the LGBTQ, RLS, NMNP groups that are out there, group that is out there coalition that is out there with all the alphabet letters i mean what letters have they not taken over they they stole the rainbow and they're stealing all the letters of the alphabet they just keep adding letters to the alphabet what kind of nonsense is this but christians won't say a single thing about it their christians won't say a single thing about it you'll let it come in your schools you'll let it come in your places of work you'll let it come all throughout public society christians won't say a single thing be crickets nothing i don't have a cricket sound but there's Jesus now. Access denied. Where y'all at? And so he's talking about in Islam, they don't play that kind of stuff. Is Islam they don't, they don't they don't play that kind of stuff. What y'all doing? Haram. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's haram. And I like that it's <clears throat> yes and no. And what's the point in what's the point in a religion if you're too afraid to say what you believe in? Or afraid to stick up for it. Or yeah. afraid to, to defend it. Dang, he's making... Look, he's making such good points. He's off. Look, he's... Andrew Tate is off. But every once in a while, a broken clock can be right two times a day. Right? <laughs> a broken clock can be right two times a day. And he got on the track of saying a couple of right things. He didn't even know why he's saying right things. He's accidentally saying right things. But he said that, you know what, I, he he put some respect on Islam because at least they're going to stand up and say, we believe what we believe. At least they're going to stand up and say, Psh, cultural trends that are out there, Psh, nonsense. Christianity's not going to do that. Christianity's going to tolerate everything. 
Christianity is going to try to be nice to everybody. Christianity is going to try to conform to everything. Christianity is going to try to be everything for everybody at all times and every place so that it just is so watered down that there's no claims whatsoever that are exclusive about Jesus or anything that has to do with Christianity. Is he right? Dang it. Andrew Tate. Then what's the point in any of it? What's the point in any of it? <laughs> You're not going to believe it. Now, his his last point there, he was he 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 returned back to his uh, the brokenness of his clock. There is a point. And let me let me get out of here. On this. There is a point to all of it, Andrew Tate. There is a point. And let me land the plane with saying this today. Dang, we're in an hour and 14 minutes. This is a long show, but it's, it needs to be long. The point in all of it is that there are so many voices that speak to us, lies. We live in an atmosphere of lies constantly coming to us. We need something from outside of the oxygen of the atmosphere that we live in to give us life. We cannot breathe this air and survive. We cannot survive in this terrain. We need help from outside of ourselves. But we need one who understands the frailty of ourselves to be able to help us to know how it is that we can most be helped. And condescending to the frailty that we have is in fact our creator who knows us and who knows every detail. The Bible talks about Jesus knowing every hair of our head. And I'll close by simply saying this. Andrew Tate got it wrong when he said, what's the point of all of this? The point of all of this is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. To know Christ and the power of his sufferings and to be known by Christ and to make him known to the world. That is the point of all of it. Because this thin life, this vapor that we have that is called life, it will soon be over. And like William Cowper said, only one life it will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last.